Have any of you ever been forced into buying a part for your car? And I mean, not like, sorry, honey, I had to buy it. I was forced into it. But I mean, like really, really back into a corner and had to buy something. Well, we got a couple things in today. We have small box and a big box. Um, we'll go over that first. And this, I'm not even sure really what exactly is in there, but it's heavy. So let me show you how I was actually forced into buying new parts. I enjoy doing modifications to my car. I enjoy researching. I enjoy figuring out which one's going to be the best modification, having options, and deciding what's going to work best for my application. But in this case, I wasn't given a choice. I had to buy a Grim Speed 3 bolt external wastegate up pipe. If you remember from my previous video, or a few videos ago, there was the problem with the the up pipe that I had, the external wastegate was just welded on and it started to rust because it was mild steel was used instead of a stainless steel. Now the external wastegate wasn't sealing properly around the top of the external wastegate. So the Mad Dad header that I have is a three bolt design, which means the bottom part the flange that goes into the header or butts up against the header is three bolts. So there's no options for this unless you want to build custom, which I had a fabrication shop, the same fabrication shop who did the intake air temp sensor on my intercooler pipe. I'll show you that. They came out really well, but they were just basically going to cut off the top flange, cut off the bottom flange, and build me a whole new pipe and an external wastegate fitting, but with a V-band. They wanted four to five hundred dollars just to start, and they said it could go up from there depending on labor. And Grimspeed is the only person that makes a three bolt external wastegate that will fit my header. Other companies that I'm not going to name will sell a three bolt external wastegate a pipe with a header package, which is like a thousand dollars, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars for the header and the up pipe. I reached out to them. They said. Sorry, we can't separate the parts. They come as a package. Which in this time, I mean, this economy, turning away customers that have four or five hundred dollars cash ready to drop, it's a conundrum. That just blows my mind that people can actually do that. So I didn't go with them because I don't want to replace my headers and buy a whole kit. So I had to get the Grim Speed up pipe ceramic coated because the things get hot back there. There's a turbo drain hose back there. There's a lot of stuff back there and I don't want to run wrap as much as possible on this car just for drivability issues, oil leaks, possible fire. I don't like that. The external wastegate kit also came with a dump tube, screamer pipe, a few different ways to say it, but look at how damaged my other one was. I mean, side by side, the Grim Speed one is a little bit smaller. The diam whole diameter of the up pipe is smaller, but I didn't have a choice. Um, but look at this down pipe. Look at how look at this dump tube. How smashed and destroyed it is. I'm glad the Grim Speed one came with a new one because this poor thing is hammered. I mean, how many times did it get run over? Before we put the up pipe in, I figured, why not save some money? Heat wrap is expensive. So a little bit of paper, a little bit of tape will go a long way. I mean, look at that wrap. I mean, that's going to be really good at uh, repelling heat. No way. Just kidding. The company I bought this from said I could um, basically borrow it because we're not sure if it's going to fit in the car. Nobody could verify if it would work with the Mad Dad headers. So they said, yeah, sure, buy it. Make sure you wrap it up when you go to install it really well because if it doesn't fit, um, they will return it. After cleaning up some of the gaskets, this one isn't as bad. This one you can see right here. There's a lot of black discoloration on both sides, which led me to inspect the flange at the header. Same thing, dark here, really dark and corroded around here. So I'm guessing it's had somewhat of a leak. I put a, a straight edge to it. Um, you can actually see that there is a little bit of bend here. So what we're going to do is put some sandpaper on this piece of glass, put some weight on it and see if we can file it a little bit more flat. Probably won't be able to get it perfect, but a little better. I 
after a long time sanding with 100 grit, it's the most coarse sandpaper I have. You can see there's still a lot of low spots on this. I mean, all right here is still low, over here is still low, and I mean, it's a lot of sanding. I probably could do 80 grit, but I don't know. I was thinking of taking it to a machine shop, having a millet, and this side is even worse. I mean, look at all this, all, look at all these low spots here. All here, all the way around. That's just not, that's not just the lighting. That is, here's the only high spots here where they bolt up. So, I think I might just take some sandpaper and clean up the edges because the um, gaskets actually have quite a thick lip on both sides. And, I don't know, I think a couple heat cycles, retighten, heat cycles, retighten. I think the flange will probably seal up pretty well. But like I said, little sandpaper around the exhaust ports and bolt it together because I just got to get this thing running again. I can't keep letting little tasks like this put me back week after week after week. From what I can tell, it looks like the downpipe and the header are going to work together. Here's the flange to the header. There is my custom wrapped up pipe. And now I gotta take it all back apart and cut off all that tape. Test fitted the header. It fit the up pipe nicely, so removed all the tape and paper. Now I'm in a conundrum. I don't want to put the headers back on until we figure out all these oil leaks. Because like I showed you, I did get these hoses. Look at how swollen this thing is. I mean, that thing is huge. It should not be that big. Do we just start ripping this apart? The whole front timing cover? Or do I just put the header back in and get the freaking thing running again? Part of the problem, I know it's coming from inside this cover. You can see right here. I mean, look at that. If I separate the timing, the front cover, look, you can see oil coming out. That is my guess. Maybe the cam seals or a crank seal. Look at that. Oh gosh, this just gives me so much anxiety. I'm not getting anything ever done on this car. What? is in here. I have an idea, but I'm not sure. Huh. Oh, come on. Tiny garage problems. Oh, turbo gasket. I do not like reusing gaskets, especially in hard to reach places. This is what is so heavy. Subaru, blue, long life, and I freeze. Later, not in this video, we're gonna need some of these parts, not all of them. We have OEM radiator hoses. We have some header to head gaskets, OEM. Because like I said, I don't like to reuse old gaskets, especially in hard to reach places. T-bolt clamps for those hoses, thermostat. And one, two, three, four, five hoses for the oil cooler O-ring because we're gonna change that as well since we're under there and it seems to be maybe part of the problem. I think the whole front cover is gonna have to come off but since we're gonna change the O-ring, I'm also gonna change these hoses because they are drenched in oil and they're like sponges. They're just sitting in oil for who knows how long. So. Always a good idea to change hoses that are covered in oil. And these, we'll have to talk about a little bit later. I also want to show you guys, look at the work and the detail that went into fitting this bung for the IAT sensor. I mean, that is nice, look at that. And this is all stainless, so it shouldn't have any problems, like the up pipe. But it looks pretty good. And then there was a part that they had to plug that was where the meth kit was installed previously my plan for this video was to just put the up pipe in put the header back in the down pipe and start the car so things are changing 
and escalating quickly as they usually do. I don't want to put all that back in and then later have to remove the header to get to the oil cooler o-ring and the oil cooler coolant lines and the two coolant lines off of the water pump because the header will be in the way. I don't want to replace all those yet either because there's still oil leaking from that front cover. I think this turned into a bigger project as it usually always does. Stay positive, keep pushing forward. You guys keep telling me, keep pushing forward, you're almost there. I don't feel like it. The two coolant hoses, the upper and lower radiator hoses that I wanted to change out, let me show you the ones I have now and why I wanna change them. So these are Samco Sport hoses, really nice hoses. I don't know how old they are. They could be five, 10 years old. That scares me. If you look real closely, there is white coming through here, which people said is actually coolant leaking through. And that scares me. If you smell these hoses, you get close enough to them, you can actually smell coolant. I don't like that either. When the car gets hot, it reeks like there's a coolant leak. I've been under this thing so many times, I would see if there's a coolant leak. There is literally no coolant leak. So I believe the smell is coming from these. I'm changing them to the OEM ones for two reasons. I trust rubber hoses a little bit more than silicone hoses. And I am really trying to get rid of all the red in this engine bay. So this is gonna be another hose that's just gonna be changed to a rubber one. Radiator hose is gonna be changed. The intercooler piping can be painted easily. This is going to be the next one to attack. Uh, it's not a big deal. I think I'm just going to try to find a used one once we get the intake and everything set up. Um, actually, I probably should do that before. But I'd like to change that to black as well. So, in order to get to the front cover, so much has to happen. And that is going to be a lot. I don't know if I should put it in several videos or one video. You guys let me know what you'd like to see. One really long video. Maybe just a really fast time lapse. Radiator's gonna have to be drained to come out. Hoses are gonna have to come out. Accessory belts are gonna have to come out. Um, the whole front cover is gonna have to come off. I don't, I don't know, I mean, I have to watch videos. I have to see how difficult this is. It doesn't look easy, but I mean, I'm sure it can be handled. Wish me luck, I don't even know. I don't even know where to start. I don't know what to do. But at least we're going somewhere. Maybe it's backward a few steps. Eventually it'll be forward. After some thought and a lot of debate, I think we are gonna have to put this on hold. The up pipe, the header, the down pipe going back in, that is not what we need to address right now. We need to address the oil leaks because they're just gonna continue to leak and they're gonna mess up new parts and new gaskets and new hoses. So maybe we are gonna cut this video short, call it a wrap, because I really need to do some more research, figure out what is gonna go into removing the front time cover. So I really appreciate everybody watching. Hope you all have a great day. Please comment down below, give me some encouragement, subscribe, like this video, it really helps. And we'll have a big project coming up next video. Thanks again. Please support the channel, watch another video. Hit the thumbs up down below and like it. Also subscribe. If you want to see me keep making videos, I need your help to grow. Thank you.